What is the CARES Act and what does it mean for you? That's exactly the question that I'm gonna be answering and we're gonna start right now. Hey guys, Hans Strazina with the Gunderman Group here, uh, coming to you with another video, this time obviously talking about the CARES Act. Uh, I wanted to bring in another opinion, so I did an interview on Facebook Live with my buddy Nick McCutcheon, and uh, we talked about the implications of the CARES Act, all the do's and the don'ts, who you should talk to, what questions you should ask, and the like. Uh, so that's what I've cut up, put into this video, uh, to hopefully give you the answers that you're looking for. Uh, so if you get value out of this, please consider giving me the thumbs up on the video, uh, as well as leave any comments down below of questions that we didn't answer or clarification you're looking for, and we'll make sure we get you those resources. And of course, consider subscribing, uh, because I'm going to continue putting out quality content like this every week, uh, so you don't want to miss any of it. Uh, so without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into it with Nick McCutcheon. Live, Nick. McCutcheon, thank you so much for coming in, sitting down and, and having a conversation about the CARES Act. Really excited to, to know what you know. Before, before we uh, dig into the content here, uh, can you give a little bit of background on who you are and um, just what you're doing now? Definitely. So thanks for letting me uh, join you today. I'd love to talk about the CARES Act. Um, my name is Nick McCutcheon. Like you said, um, I work for Bank of America's private bank. We do private wealth management, uh, formerly named U.S. Trust, but now rebranded as Bank of America's private bank. We do trust and estate planning, wealth management, investment management, credit, uh, and banking. Right on. And, and uh, just for context, because I threw it in the comments, uh, you you and I know each other through the rowing world, and we obviously have our our polos on today just to just to give a shout out. You, even though the rowing season got canceled this year. Um, gonna give support to our teams. Uh, Nick wrote it, Cal Berkeley, I wrote at University of Washington, really bitter rivals in the rowing world, but um, tons of respect for one another through those programs. And obviously now we're here doing business together. So um, just wanted to give a shout out on that. Yeah, go bears, go dogs, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> mainly go back 12. <laughs> yeah, go back 12, that's right. Let's get into it. Uh, CARES Act, it's, it's a big con uh, piece of conversation that's happening right now. Um, you've broken it down really wonderfully. Um, you've sent me some notes over here. Uh, so I'm not a lender. I'm obviously a real estate uh, agent and helping people buy and sell. And I, and I typically don't get involved in the financing except for when it comes to writing a contract. But why don't you give us a little bit more in your world as to what it is and then we'll talk, you know, implications and, you know, what it all means uh, after that. Definitely. So I'll back up first. And before we get into the CARES Act, um, I'll talk very briefly on the, the three pieces of legislation aimed at the coronavirus pandemic or three phases, we'll call it. Phase one is the $8.3 billion spending bill enacted on March 6th. That was mainly pushing back tax filings and tax payments. Now the tax filing deadline for 2019 is actually July 15th. Phase two was the Families First Coronavirus Response Act enacted on March 18th, which expanded family, family leave and sick leave. So you can take longer extended periods of time off caring for your family. And then third, which is the biggest portion and what we will be talking about mainly today is known as the CARES Act. Um, sometimes being referred to as phase three, broken down into kind of two categories, one for the individual and two for businesses and business owners to stay, stay afloat during these rough times. Um, you know, speaking of that, that sort of stimulus package, people have been talking about bucks, you know, you get $500 for, for dependents under 17. Um, let's, let's dig in on that because I think that's sort of the first thing that came out and a lot of people wanted to know what, what it all meant. Like the, the pushing back of the tax filings made sense. Um, and I think that's relatively straightforward for most folks. Um, and if, it's, if you're not clear on that, go talk to your CPA because that's not us. <laughs> but um, let's talk about that rebate for a second. Definitely. And um, for everyone who's joining in live, definitely consult with your CPAs first. The bank, we please use Hans, myself, as a resource for this information, but consult with your CPA prior to making any uh, changes to your tax filings or implementation. So for, for the individual portion of the CARES Act, um, Hans mentioned 
$1,200 rebate to the public. So this is for US residents um, and they'll receive $1,200 rebate um, and $2,400 if you're married filing jointly on your mm -hmm. tax returns. Uh, and then in, in addition to that, if you claim any dependents on your tax returns, that's $500 for every child under the age of 17. This rebate will begin to phase out for individuals with incomes above, sev above 75,000 uh, if you're filing single in individual and then mm -hmm. 150,000 if you're married filing jointly. Uh, it completely phases out when you reach $99,000 in income individually, $198,000 if you're married filing jointly. Um, and then there, there's also an ability to withdraw money out of, out of some retirement plans. And I withdrawals up to a hundred thousand in aggregate from qualified plans, including IRAs, 401ks, et cetera, uh, during 2020. Uh, for coronavirus, coronavirus related purposes will not be subject to the 10% early withdrawal penalty as well. If you're not 59 and a half yet, if you're 59 and a half plus you are exempt from that rule. Got it. Okay. So it, it gives people an, op an ability to potentially access cash if they need it without that huge penalty on the back end. Exactly. And you have up until three years to pay put the money back into your retirement plan. And if you don't do it within those three years, you just get subject to an income tax based on the amount you pulled out. Also, there was a suspension on, on uh, federal student loan payments as well, as far as I understand, because that's a big one that you and I encounter, especially with first time home buyers is generally they still have a student loan payment and that skews their debt to equity and, you know, reduces how much they can afford or uh, changes the type of loan product they would require. Um, so that's a big one that a lot of the younger, you know, 30 something, 20 something home buyers are facing right now. Um, but those payments, it sounds like are, they can put them on pause essentially uh, with no, with no big penalties. That is that what we're understanding from that? Yes. So all federal student loan payments have been suspended for a minimum six months right now. Now there's a difference if you have uh, refinanced your tax returns um, that, and it's a, in a private institution, for example, those have not been suspended. You should definitely, if, if it is in a private, go ahead and call that provider or that debt collector and see if they also, but all federal student loans have been suspended for six months. Now, in terms of like buying a home, for instance, I, it's not, information is very fluid right now the banks are still deciding whether or not to count that or not count that against your debt to income ratio. We've got the, you know, suspension of paying taxes potentially for a while or, or the pushing out of the date, um, you know, federally backed student loans suspended those payments, you know, the $1,200 and some amount of money for dependents, depending on your, your uh, adjusted gross income. What other kind of things are we looking at uh, here with the CARES Act? Definitely. So one other thing that is related to retirement plans, uh, required minimum distributions. If you are taking those currently, you do not have to take those for 2020. They mm -hmm. have been suspended. Again, talk to your financial advisor. Um, you are more than happy to talk to me offline as well as what we do is private wealth management. So for required minimum distributions, they're, um, they are suspended for this year, 2020. If you have already taken them, you can put them back and not count it against you. Uh, but again, consult with your financial advisor as this is also an option for you. Paycheck protection, that's another one that's, that's come up. Um, and, and I actually had a couple of clients in the last day or two reach out to me, which is one of the reasons I wanted to uh, pop on and do this video with you. But um, what do you, what can you tell us about the paycheck protection and what that actually means, uh, in, in your world and from your understanding? Definitely. So this is probably the biggest portion of the CARES Act. It's a nearly a $350 billion loan program called the Paychecks Protection Program aimed to, aimed to provide banks the liquidity to lend money to businesses, business owners, and it's fully guaranteed by the Small Business Administration. These 
loans and a stimulus is not available yet. So this, this part of the bill, the CARES Act, was just signed by President Trump on Friday. The Treasury and the bank are going back and forth, finalizing underwriting application process, et cetera, to um, implement for the banks. They, it's not implemented yet, so we're, we should be expecting that next week or the week after, but that's what it looks like so far. Okay. So loan proceeds, when you get this stimulus, can be used for salaries, up to 100 grand in salary per employee. Can you be used for sick leave, medical leave, insurance premiums, certain administration expenses, such as mortgage interest, if the business owner owns that property, rent, utility bills, basically overhead, um, in addition to allowing allowable uses under the SBA rules. There are some pretty strict uh, uses for this, but it, but it also seems like it covers most things relative to running a business and the expenses you would expect to, to need to cover. Exactly. And this would be, think of it as this stimulus will be able to cover your overhead costs for the next two and a half months. So let's say you get the loan on May 1st. During those eight weeks, as long as the ex business expenses aren't reduced, employee headcount stays the same, that mm -hmm. loan will be forgiven. So the idea is like, you can't take the loan and then lay off half your workforce and, and pocket the rest. Exactly. If you, if you do do that, that, would, that, that loan counts as income and you will be taxed on that if for the year of 2020. Generally, the idea is like keep people getting paid, keep the mortgages going, keep the rent going, the other services so that money is flowing and we don't totally grind this thing to a complete halt. Uh, so that, you know, because as money changes hands, as we buy houses, sell houses, for example, you know, a lot of people get paid in those transactions, not just the buyer and the seller, but obviously the lender, the agents, the gardeners, all the way to the, to the notary who, who comes and notarizes your grant deed. You know, a lot of people receive money out of that. And, and if we can kind of keep the government's trying to keep those cogs moving to some degree, um, and this is a, this is the way that they've chosen to, to do that. And, um, so it's something to keep an eye on and something to look into as well. If any of this resonates with your situation, one question that's come up a lot, and maybe you can speak to this and maybe you can't, uh, is, is the mortgage deferment that a lot, you know, Congress and a lot of people have talked about how, um, you know, uh, F uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac have suspended, uh, starting the eviction or the, foreclosure process. A lot of people in Cal California, we've suspended the evictions for the next 60 days for non-payment of rent. Um, can you speak to that on the lending side and, and talk about what that actually means? Because it most people, I, I'm afraid, may think that it means that the their payments might be forgiven. And I don't think that that's the case based on my reading, but I'd love so as someone in the industry to, that you can give us a, a, a real answer on that one give you what Bank of America is doing. So for our loans, you can call in, um, you can simply go on your app, the mobile app, or do it online. You can defer your mortgage payment. So what does that mean? If it's April 1st today, a lot of mortgages, you know, due date is today. So you can defer your mortgage payment. There is no penalty. It just gets added to the life of the loan. So instead of it being at the very front of your loan, it gets moved to the back. The interest will stay the same. The principal stays the same. You just get paused, basically. There's no addition, there's no subtraction, just gets put on pause. For right now, it's um, you can do it for up to three months. And then after those three months, it's subject to um, whatever the bank decides after that. And then as far as the qualification for that goes, like what is Bank of America at least asking borrowers to provide in the way of any kind of proof or a layoff letter or a hardship letter? Or are they asking for anything like that when you ask for this deferment? They're not asking for anything at this time. It's simply given to uh, everyone who has a Bank of America mortgage. Um, you can call uh, call in or simply do it online, but there's no proof necessary, um, which which is nice. It's allowing the public to have a sense of ease um, and kind of relieve some stress right now. 
Um, have you guys had any conversations internally about that that you're able to share or, or any thoughts on that and what that may look like down the road um, and how it may affect interest rates and ability to, to lend and all that sort of thing? So a big kind of uh, misconception, I, I guess you could say, is the Fed lowered rates to zero. Well, mortgage rates should be zero too, right? Not necessarily the case. Um, so when the Fed lowers interest rates, it lowers the Fed funds borrowing rate. It doesn't lower interest rates. Mm -hmm. When that happens, it's the 10-year treasury co correlates with the mortgage rates for the most part. But right now, and when you saw what you saw about three weeks ago, when the 10-year treasury bought, dropped below 1%, Mortgage rates and the 10-year treasury didn't really correlate with each other. Why is that? The general market went and was a flight to safety. And some, most of the time, it's a flight to safety to cash and bonds, mortgage-backed securities, for instance. When people buy more mortgage-backed securities, that drives the price up, that lowers the yield, which means that lowers interest rates. Well, that flight to safety went to all cash. So nobody was buying mortgage-backed securities for this exact same point that you mentioned. Um, they're seeing that people are, are possibly going to foreclose, possibly not going to make their mortgage payments. So why buy mortgage-backed securities? So mm -hmm. that being said, interest rates for the past couple of weeks have actually gone up incrementally because of this. Now, the Fed is trying to offset this. The Fed is pumping in money and buying mortgage-backed securities themselves to drive interest rates lower. From your perspective, are you still seeing activity in the market? Are you guys still able to write loans? Are you still able to close? Um, you know, what what is that world looking like on your end? Because I know a lot of people think that you know basically they can't get a loan right now. The banks are fully functional. Uh, Bank of America hasn't shut down any branches. The branches are still open. And right now is one of the busiest times for loans, for mortgages, commercial loans, et cetera. It's, it's, um, it's a very busy time. The bank is fully functional. Some of the, for purchases, for instance, some of the county recording offices have shut down and have gone to only e-recording, electronic recording, which yeah. has slowed that process down a little bit. So again, it's county by county. Make sure you check in. Um, you can call Hans or myself. We're very familiar with Southern and Northern California um, and state by state as well. Happy to get that information out to you. But the, this time is very busy for, for credit. Personally, I, I think that this may sort of kick off a, a change in our marketplace, at least locally. We've been very seller oriented. Uh, sellers have had most, if not all the power for a number of years. And I'm seeing that dynamic shift a little bit back towards the middle. If you're somebody who sees this as an opportunity and you, you have the, the desire to, to start to look um, and you've been beaten out and you've struggled through the last couple of years, this may be an opportunity for you to, to at least start to explore what's possible because it may not be the right time for you, but it also might be. And that's the big thing that I keep telling people. Um, but this, as many people have said on social media, this too shall pass. 100%, you know, this, this too shall pass. And uh, I keep remembering a quote that one of my rowing coaches said, who was actually an Olympian too, just like yourself. Um, and that is get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Yep. And I think uh, this time more than ever is a great time to uh, look at, uh, if you're not in the market, potentially look at getting into the market and you can talk with Hans more so about that and get, getting qualified as well. And in general, just um, the investing environments, you know, this, this, this time, this too shall pass. And when this does pass, um, you know, you could potentially get into the market right now at a, at a low point uh, relative to where we were at just 30 days ago. Um, Nick, really appreciate your time. Is there anything else that you think we should know that we didn't cover that, that you'd like to share with us before we sign off for today? Thanks for having me, Hans. I really appreciate it. And I, I just would say we can only control what we can control right now. And I think if anything you heard today from Hans or myself, if that's um, impacted you in any way, 
feel free to reach out to us. Happy to take questions and phone calls. Thank you so much for watching the video. Hopefully you got some questions answered. If there's anything that we didn't cover that you'd like more clarity on, uh, leave a comment down below. Uh, we will answer that promptly and get you those resources and those answers uh, as soon as we possibly can. And if you got value out of this, consider giving me the thumbs up on the video uh, and subscribing to the channel because I am going to continue to put out content like this, answering real estate related questions uh, that are important to folks here in the Bay Area locally. And uh, thanks in advance for subscribing. Without any further ado, though, I'm going to log it off for today. This is Hans Strazina with the Gunderman Group signing off. See you next time.